Hey, how's it going, peeps? Uh, it's uh, another week, another great week. Uh, <clears throat> wanted to share with you guys quickly another devotional. We've been checking in, um, doing some phone calls, some FaceTime, some some Zooms, uh, text messages, things of that nature. Um, but just wanted to dive in with you guys just a few more minutes. Last week we shared from the thought that you are God's masterpieces. That you're not a mistake. That everything that God did, he did it perfectly. He did it in his timing. Uh, he did it well. So this week, I want to flip the script a little bit. And just talk about um, our brokenness in regards to um, how God sees us and the word of God and the gospel. Um, God can take our brokenness and turn it into something beautiful. I want to just say that up front. And we're all broken. But sometimes or so often we're, we're tempted to think or believe that our brokenness is a bad thing. And the reality of brokenness is seen in our communities. It's seen in our homes with drugs and poverty. Uh, it's seen in, seen in single parent homes. It's seen in children being neglected. It's seen with all different sorts of abuses from verbal to uh, emotional to physical we see it in unemployment being at a rise we see it in the lack of education uh, we see it with fatherless homes with welfare with starving children all over this country and even all over the world I mean so many families have been broken and shattered and it's because of the reality that we see a sinfulness dominating our world and that's true there's a reality that says brokenness is a it's a it's a bad thing, but it's not always bad. You see, the truth of Scripture shows us is that God can uh, actually take our brokenness and make it beautiful. Now, you may be thinking, how can God take the broken realities in my life and turn it into something beautiful? Well, remember, I've told you you're God's masterpiece. I told you that. And that's not just a physical reality that I'm talking about. It's a it's a spiritual reality as well. Remember, we looked at it in scripture in Psalms 139. See, brokenness is the reality that we see because of what Adam did in the garden in Genesis chapter three. Adam deliberately disobeyed God. And because of this, sin came into our world when he deliberately disobeyed God. Sin and death entered into our world. So our world became broken the moment Adam disobeyed God. And the brokenness is not only the result of Adam's sin, it's also a reality that we see in our lives because we see ourselves as broken. We have been broken from the time that we were conceived in our mother's womb up until whatever age we are right now. It's, it's, it's the reality that we have inherited sinfulness. And whenever sinfulness is, brokenness is and it'll present itself because God is holy he is removed from the reality of sinfulness but brokenness is a reality that when we surrender our lives to God it can become a very beautiful thing you see the way God makes our brokenness beautiful is when we come to him after hearing the gospel and we bring all of our pain and all of our problems and all of our brokenness to him at the cross of Jesus Christ he puts the, the, the old us to death, if you will, and he brings the new us to this resurrected life. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17 clearly tells us that we who embrace the gospel of Jesus Christ as our savior, we are a new creature. <laughs> We're a new person in Jesus Christ. The old us is dead and gone. A new us has been resurrected to life by the ministry of God, the Holy Spirit. Because we put our trust in what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. In addition to that, every day that we're living, we're living as this new creation. But we still have these, these old habits. Uh, for those of you who are members of the Good Shepherd Church, you always hear Pastor Skinner talk about it. We still have this, this stinking thinking, stinking thinking, if you will. Now, no. The things that your parents try to keep you away from, the things that your parents say that you can't do or they don't want you to do or they disallow you to do, it's because they already know the consequences of some of those uh, sins and decisions. And they know that based upon decisions that they've already made. 
based upon past experiences. But even after being saved and being in this new body or being this new person for 10 or 15 or even 20 years, we are still tempted to sin. Sometimes we still lie. Sometimes we still curse. Uh, sometimes we still cheat. Sometimes we still engage in ungodly conversations. Sometimes we, we still have lustful desires and lustful thoughts. Sometimes we're still tempted uh, to abuse and overuse drugs and, and alcohol and uh, illicit drugs. Sometimes we are still tempted to have sex outside of marriage. Sometimes we're still uh, tempted to engage in pornography. All of those things are a reality. But here's the good news. God is patient. He's loving. He's understanding. It's this process that he's walking us through. Big word. It's called sanctification. And literally what it means is that God every day is taking us away from our sinfulness and bringing us more towards his holiness. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse 18 tells us that God is taking us from glory to glory to glory to glory. That means as we're growing in our relationship with Jesus, God is allowing our brokenness to become more beautiful. And it's not just to us, but to others who look at our lives and see us. Uh, some of my ex-friends and ex-classmates, sometimes they run into me and they see me and they say, man, you used to do this and you used to do that. And when we would go out to the clubs, you used to be doing this and you used to be doing that. And when we go to a party, you used to be bringing this and you would be bringing that. And I remember seeing you with this chick and that chick and this girl and that girl and running with this crew and that crew. And I remember you used to go here and doing there. But now you out here telling people about the good news about Jesus Christ. And sometimes they confuse like, man. How did all that happen? How did that shift take place? How did that transition take place? And I don't take any credit for myself. I just simply tell them, hey, man, I was broken. I stopped fronting like I wasn't broken, like I didn't have issues going on. And I turned my life around. And that was only because Jesus Christ came into my heart. I'm a pastor's son and I've always served in ministry i've always been engaged and active in ministry but even being engaged and active in ministry from the time that i was born i wasn't actually saved and giving my life to jesus christ until i was 19 years old and that's when i heard and acknowledged the gospel of jesus christ and i said look i got a lot of mess i got a lot of filthiness i got a lot of brokenness going on in my life but i need jesus and at the moment that i realized and admitted and acknowledged that i was a sinner who couldn't save myself i was broken i couldn't fix it on my own i cried out to jesus to save me and he saved me immediately and from that moment on he made all the broken pieces in my life to come together and look beautiful so see, here's what the reality of brokenness actually producing something that is of value looks like. You and I realize it every single day, but maybe you have not just uh, taken the time to step back and see how brokenness is actually a positive thing in your life. You know, the, the food that we eat, we eat vegetables and fruits and things of that nature, and we see that they are planted in the ground. Well, that soil had to be broken before a seed could be planted so through the brokenness of that soil through that seed now being uh, planted if you will it died and when it yielded a harvest of fruit or crops or whatever it was when we consume it and we eat it that brokenness that came from that soil actually brought us life through the sustenance in the food that we eat in addition to this we also call when we eat breaking bread and when we have to break the bread so we can consume it if you go to uh, uh, my pizza and you get one of those large pizzas you can't just throw it in your mouth and eat it all in one bite if you go to chipotle and get one of those big old burritos you can't just throw the whole burrito in your mouth if you if you go to chick-fil-a you can't just throw the entire sandwich in your mouth you've probably tried it but you can't do it it's the reality of taking pieces and breaking that food down our bodies breaks down the food for the nourishment for our physical body. It's the same thing that Jesus was talking about in the parable of the sower in Matthew chapter 13. He talked about the seed that was that was sown. It was actually the word of God. 
and the soil was actually the condition of human hearts. You see, three types of soils that rejected the word of God. One had its seed snatched away, which represents the enemy coming and taking the gospel message that was proclaimed so that the non-believer won't believe the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ that was proclaimed. You see, some seed fell off on a pathway, like a sidewalk, and it got trumpet on. At first, it looked like it was about to spring up some nice fruit, but it got stepped on, if you will. And Jesus says, that's like somebody who hears the gospel, who hears the word of God, who hears the, the teaching of scripture. And they like, yo, you know, I'm all in. I'm all with this Jesus stuff. But then all of a sudden, when people start treating them different because they are Christian now, they start folding under pressure. So that seed never took root. It never sprung up. It was never genuine. Then there's this third type of soil that it fell on that path and it sprung up. But then the thorns and thistles came up and choked it and killed it. Well, then what does that signify? Jesus said it's like somebody who says I'm all in. But then the paper chase comes or your friends come or other distractions may come your way. And now rather than chasing after Jesus, you're chasing after the things of the world. So that soil never produced anything. But then Jesus says that was that seed that fell on good soil. It was broken and it was ready to be received. And the seed was ready to grow. And guess what? It grew and produced fruit. Well, that's our heart. So it's my prayer that your heart would be that good soil. That you would bring your heart to God and allow him to break it so that the seed of the word of God could be planted in your heart. And your heart will bear fruit so that God can take something broken and turn it into something beautiful. Life is good and God is generous. I hope you've been blessed.